it boils down to wanting to try to box you into this lord liar lunatic um which is a, a false trichotomy there can really only be three options either a he's a madman b he's lying or c the option that terrifies us he actually is who he says he is the, this commenter asked who do you believe the historic Jesus was. And I said, unknown. Anyone who claims to know is just making assumptions based on conjectures. Hello, this is Michael Beverly. Welcome to my channel. So I got a comment, a series of questions from somebody, and it was too, it was just too big to answer in writing. So I thought I'd do a, a quick video about it. And I realized as I was looking at his questions, the goal of this, the goal of these of the questioner was to to try to to try to set up this lord liar lunatic argument when i say anyone claims to know i'm not saying you can't know uh, to some degree of of probability that like was jesus an apocalyptic preacher that seems that seems pretty likely was he an apocalyptic jewish preacher who said or did something that pissed off the romans and got him crucified yeah probably that looks pretty re reasonable but that's not really where the que the question is that's like all of that's a non sequitur when somebody wants when someone's trying to box you into the lord 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 liar lunatic i'm going to get these alliterations down see she sells seashells by the seashore he actually is who he says he is so this guy comments back, Jesus of Nazareth is a historical figure, and I think you're too intelligent to deny that. So who do you think he was historically? A good moral teacher, a fraud and cult leader, a madman? Again, it's the Lord, liar, lunatic, trichotomy. And I've been around too long to fall for this, obviously. So um, what I wrote back is he's not, he's not a historical figure with any writings, so we don't know. He may have been a madman, but just but likely just another apocalyptic preacher of the day. He seemed to be a Jew. I mean, that seems pretty self-evident if Jesus was going around collecting followers that were Jews. And if at least some of the writings that we have about Jesus are true, he was a Jew. The early Christians were certainly Jews. Paul started off as a Jew. Um, so... Jew, 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 Jew. Anyways, let's look at, let's look at what, that, what he comes back to me with and then we can start breaking down where where this, there's certain things christians do and it's i don't think they intend to be dishonest and i don't think they i don't think their intention is to be deceptive or deceiving but at the end of the day it doesn't matter what their intention is facts are facts truth is truth and probabilities are probabilities and there seems to be a lot of assertion of certainty by christians and I think it's unjustified. Okay, so the first thing he says is, he says, neither is Alexander the Great. The earliest sources of his life come 400 years after he was buried, which that's not true. And so he writes, bad argument. I had an argument. Bad argument. Bad. Now, what's a bad argument? I'm saying we, we don't have, we don't have writings from Jesus. Is that, is that wrong? No. no. I mean, I don't think anybody claims we have writings from Jesus. He brings all four variables into one stroke on the ground, writing in the ground. And what does it say after that? All right. I stand corrected. In John 8, he writes in the ground, and some people claim to know what he wrote. But it's a stretch. Now, why didn't Jesus write anything down? Well, here's the answer from an, another apologist. Those who are all authorized by Jesus, the apostles were chosen by him, sent out by him to speak on, uh, on behalf of him. So the reason Jesus didn't write anything down is because he had authorized disciples, apostles doing it, and they did a good job. He didn't need to bother. That's the reason. So what I, my answer is, you know, to what do you think about, what do you think the historical Jesus was he, was he, it's again, it's the Lord, Lord liar lunatic. Was Jesus a madman or was he, you know, was he the Lord or, or was he a lunatic, blah, blah, blah. 
and I said, we, we can't tell from his writings because they don't exist. And this guy writes back, neither is Alexander the Great. Wait, neither is Alexander the Great what? Like, what is he claiming that neither the, the neither must refer to something? And I don't know what he means. So I went and did this and you can go do this yourself. What evidence do we have that Alexander the Great existed and did certain things? It's insurmountable amount of evidence. Alexander the Great's effect on the on the world. He's considered by many the greatest, you know, the greatest military campaignist ever. There are um, cultures that wrote about him. There are historians that wrote about him. Yes, not not ne not necessarily contemporary ones, but they were using um, sources that were earlier. So we know about the stuff he did, including their cities named after him. Now, this would seem to be this is one of the arguments people often bring up when they when they're arguing against the mythicist position. It's like. Oh, there's so much evidence for Jesus. If you don't believe Jesus was a historical figure, how can you believe Alexander the Great was a historical figure? Now, first of all, that's a bullshit argument. There's vast, there's vast, almost infinite more evidence, archaeological evidence, written evidence, coins, sarcophaguses, um, you know, cultures that were taken over have stuff about him. Like, there is no, and this this also applies to Julius Caesar and another one Christians like to bring up. Oh well, if you don't think Jesus was historical, how could you think? How could you think Julius Caesar was historical? Like, dudes, there's insurmountable evidence to think Julius Caesar or Alexander the Great was invented by people. And we don't have that for Jesus, and it doesn't mean he wasn't historical. It just means we don't know that much about his actual life you get the difference there we can we can say i'll grant you jesus was a real person now tell me what he wrote down well he didn't write down nothing okay tell me what he said well i think he said all these things like the sermon on the mount the beatitudes and you know bring bring these enemies of of mine in front of me and slaughter them um but you know love your neighbor turn the other cheek like half the shit jesus says Christians act like they don't believe he said it because they don't follow none of it. But never mind that. If I want to know what Marcus Aurelius said, I I have, and you know who knows? Maybe the copies of of Marcus Aurelius's meditations have been subverted or copied wrong. But I but I at least have some. I have some stuff that's claimed to be written by him. And I, I think by all accounts, the diaries and what, whatnot are, I don't think people are disputing their authenticity. They might dispute some minor details. Um, just as a sidebar, the, the thing about Marcus Aurelius's meditations is there's some dispute about whether he wrote everything himself or if he had some editorial help from, or perhaps from a scribe. And then you have the same I, the same possibilities that people say about the New Testament writing over over its transmission and translation, there could be some changes and so forth. And then, of course, also the context that it's written in, you know, quite quite often the lens of looking back, you know, 1800 or 2000 years, our modern lens sometimes has trouble figuring out exactly how to interpret somebody's interpretation of things going on at that time when we don't have the exact context but let, let let's imagine if we are asking the question did homer exist well if we don't actually know if there's like a real guy homer that wrote a bunch of stuff or if it's if homer is an amalgamation of certain poets and bards and it just got attributed to homer so in the in the same way when we talk about and don't accuse me of trying to be a mythicist here or um, and I don't even want to get in. I don't even want to go down that path. I'm just saying we don't know. We don't know the details of Jesus's life to the degree that Christians like to claim. And we don't know what he said the way Christians like to claim. We we don't know those things for sure. I don't know why. I don't know why Christians like to bring up Alexander the Great and Julius Caesar. I mean, even if they're arguing with a mythicist, that position actually completely undercuts their argument. Because we have massive amounts of stuff from Julius Caesar and Alexander the Great, and we don't have that for Jesus. So even somebody that's 
the, that's strong, let's say a, an atheist who's strong on historicity, ask them, list out the things you know and believe for 100%, like you're, you're as you're ninety nine point nine nine percent Jesus did or said some certain thing. That's going to be a very small list. Whereas if you ask that about Alexander the Great or Julius Caesar, the list of things that we can be ninety nine point nine percent confidence that they did, like their actions, that that list is a lot longer because we actually have physical archaeological evidence. We have um, enemy either attestation or en enemy writings or conquered people's writings or archaeological evidence. Come on. This is not even, it's not even a fair fight. It's just ridiculous. Okay. So I, I write, he might've been a madman, but likely just another of many apocalyptic preachers of the day. A, he's a madman. Now, when we start throwing around terms like madman. Well, uh, I have been, uh, thinking quite a bit about this. Yeah, that's subjective. Um, uh, could Jesus have been um, like kind of crazy in the way we use the vernacular today? Well, I don't know. Like if 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 an American did some stuff that was considered treasonous and he did it right there in front of the White House in Washington, D.C. and got arrested for it, we might call the guy crazy. So if Jesus is going around pissing off the Romans, and he gets arrested and crucified, we might say, yeah, that was that was crazy. So in that sense, yeah, Jesus might have been a little bit nutso. Like maybe he did some stupid things, got himself killed. Maybe not. Maybe Jesus was totally righteous in denouncing the Romans or calling for revolt. But I don't know. Historically, we know how that worked out. Not very well. Crucify him! Crucify! Crucify him! So it's one. It's a weird thing. You know, if you watch. If you watch, what was it? The, I think it's called the piano. This, I think it's called the piano. And there's, there's a point in the, in the Polish ghetto where, 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 um, you know, the Jews have been like, they're basically in a, it's essentially like a prison, perhaps smartly are more pragmatic. And they say, look, I'm, I don't want to be a collaborator with, you know, these invading forces. I, you know, I love my people and my culture, but at the same time, I'm not suicidal. So was was Jesus a madman? I'm like I don't if if the if the portrait we have is somewhat accurate, I don't think Jesus was crazy or a madman any more than any other person, Joseph Smith or Muhammad or any any other any other person in history that believes they have some special message from God or that they're special and they go out and preach about it. So so he says, so this guy says to me, like, is it by his madness he performed miracles? Is it by his madness he rose from the dead? And now you're going to say those things didn't happen. But in that case, someone must have made them up, right? Who did then? And what did they gain from? Well, we know who made the stuff up. Like the early disciples and, and, and you know, the early, the early movement. And what did they gain from it? Well, what does anyone gain what did the 9-11 hijackers gain from flying, a, you know, or forcing forcing uh, themselves into the cockpit and flying a bill, an airplane into a building? What did they gain? Religious people aren't afraid to die. Religious people aren't afraid to say things that the rest of us think are crazy. What did they have to gain for it? I, you know, we can't ask them specifically, but people do crazy stuff or believe crazy things all the time. And even Christians will attest to this. So I, and the argument is just dumb, dumb in what in, but in that case, someone must have made them up, made up the miracles. Yeah. We have tons of other characters in the same time period that did miracles. Do you believe all those miracles? Do we have to, do we, do we continually have to go over this? There are tons of other people that Christians say, oh, well, those are just myths. But you, but my guy is right. Like, my guy did real miracles, but the other guy's a myth. Yeah, okay, fine. Believe that if you want. And then I said, Jesus said nothing unique, at least nothing to attribute it, attributed to him, as we have no idea what, if anything, he actually said. Now, 
I'm going to stand by this claim. We don't actually know what Jesus actually said. A lot of stuff that was written down that he said might be variations of things he said and taught. They might, there might be things in the New Testament that are basically almost completely verbatim what Jesus said. Now, he's, he's saying, um, can you name me anyone before Jesus who told you to love your enemies and pray for those who mistreat you? Well, I don't know. So I better go do some research. Maybe he's, maybe he's got me on this one. Maybe Jesus was completely unique on that. I will say as a sidebar, even if those sayings are unique, we don't know Jesus said them. Why? Because we're trusting, we're trusting people that claim, that claim, that claim, that claim, that claim that Jesus said that. We didn't even know how many, we don't know how many people are in this telephone game. So we don't actually know if, if there was some clever golden rule saying we don't actually know Jesus said it. But I don't know. Even if we grant that, was anything he said actually really, you know, like it wasn't like he was talking about forming a democratic a democratic republic form of government because that would be more fair he wasn't he wasn't saying slavery is an evil institution let's end it he wasn't saying all races should be co treated completely equal in in society and the justice system and women and men should be treated equally in society and in justice and it doesn't matter if you're uh, part Jew and part Samaritan or all Samaritan or anything, you should be treated the same. Like, where did Jesus say any of those things? I haven't seen it. Okay. So I said, you know, in response to my comment that Jesus said nothing unique, this guy writes, can you name me anyone before Jesus who told you to love your enemies and pray for those who mistreat you? Okay. Let me read from Proverbs chapter 25. Verse 21, if your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat. If he's thirsty, give him water to drink. Okay, let's, that's just one reference from, from the Old Testament as the Christians see it, or the, the Hebrew Bible as the Jews see it. What other evidence is there? Well, what about Confucius? And I went on to ask Chad GPT and looked at some Wikipedia stuff, and you can do this yourself. There's other stuff besides Confucius and Buddha, and there's other teachings that predate Jesus that are very similar. You, you have to keep in mind that when, when the very earliest hunter-gatherer tribes um, were, you know, before, before humans developed writing and good communication they they tended to see the other as somebody they needed to kill or defend themselves against and as time went by and languages were formed and cities were formed and agriculture was formed people started to realize hey instead of killing the other guy i can trade with him because i have a surplus of say cattle or wheat or salmon or whatever and they have a surplus of pottery or iron eventually or you know as people developed more and more skills i'm not saying there wasn't terrible terrible wars and conquests there was but there was also the ability to trade and in that environment certain people rose up that had a message of be nice to your enemy because he's actually you know it'll actually benefit you and it's actually that he's just another person even though he may look strange and have strange customs now if if you think this this was unique to Jesus, how do you explain the proverb that says, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. And if your enemy is thirsty, give him something to drink. All I need is one. If you're saying Jesus is unique, all I need is one example. And there you go. Nothing Jesus said or taught was unique. I stand on that. And anyways, what, why even talk about that? Well, again, this whole this whole line of reasoning is the Christian's way to try to box you into the Lord, liar, or lunatic. So, so it kind of goes, I mean, I'm, everybody knows this, right? It kind of goes like this. Was Jesus lying? Like, why would he do that? Like, nobody ever lies. Or were his followers lying? What benefit would they have from lying? Like, no religious people have ever lied before. Joseph Smith was telling the truth, and so was Muhammad. Well, Obviously, people lie. 
And then the other one is, well, lots of people lie for a religion, but who lies for something they know is false, and especially if they die for it? Well, this, this is just another Christian smokescreen. There is some small amount of evidence that Peter and James died for their faith. And when I say a small amount of evidence, I mean that. It's not, it's like, it's not some exclusive, massive evidence that they were given a chance to recant or that they actually died for their faith. We, that's tradition, but there's no proof of this. It's not like, it's not like we know this for sure. And that's it. Like, we don't know, we don't know why Paul died. And, and Paul could have been deceived because Paul wasn't a witness to Jesus. And what about the other disciples? Well, we don't know. There's, there's, there's no, we don't have evidence that any of them died for their faith. And lots of people deceive themselves and die for things they think are true. We know this for a fact. Just look at some of the footage from 9-11. Do you think those guys thought they were dying for a lie? No, they thought they were dying for the truth. So this happens, this happens all the time. So was Jesus lying? Well, the thing is, we don't even know if Jesus ex existed the way he's portrayed. Now, I would also add, there are some people. So I was listening to, I was listening to, um, well, I was listening to a live stream that had, um, that they, it had, it was on, it was on Myth Vision and Apologia, like simultaneously stream. So, so Paul and Derek were talking about this and I asked in a super chat, Hey, you know, like, what are your guys, I'm curious what your guys is plus, Bayesian posterior is on this historic historical Jesus. Yeah. Michael Beverly. So posterior and on a historical Jesus. I mean, Paul, you're saying it's not 100% right in your mind. Uh, a historical Jesus. Is he asking like what percentage I would give on, uh, on what, on, on whether Jesus was a myth. Is that what the question is? Yeah, I guess I, that seems to be the point. Like, how confident are you? Uh, just guessing? I, so this is not for nothing, but I feel like Luke, the author of Luke and the author of Matthew wouldn't have had to work so hard to get Jesus born in Bethlehem if it was entirely a mythical figure, because then they could have just said he was born in Bethlehem. But I feel like there was enough of a kernel that he was a Nazarene. And that was just like ingrained that the whoever, whatever nugget of actual history there is. Um, and I know that's super thin. So um, I would, I don't know. I would give it for me. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's 75, 25, like 75%. There was a, dude that in some way inspired some of the legends mm -hmm. uh, and 25 percent that it was entirely made up but yeah okay thank you michael appreciate the super chat I don't know, are, you, are you way off from me on that or oh i'm not answering that question no i'm okay, just kidding <laughs> no 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 i uh I, it totally is subjectively throwing numbers out there without putting yeah, i don't know i don't know so uh, i lean that there was a guy I lean, I would yeah. say 70, 30. Um, I, I tend to lean that for several reasons, but I, I could be completely wrong. Right. Yeah. I always say this, but it tends to, to me that, yeah, you got guys, complete legends being built up and they did a damn good job. I think of making sure Jesus checks off all the box, all the boxes for this legendary stuff from birth narratives to, his miraculous activities to exorcisms to the list goes on and on. And I see other figures who have similarities like that in the sense that they do these things. And we would say those are legends as well. I just yeah. don't jump to the, to the, he was a myth. It doesn't make as much sense whole cloth to me as the other position, even though it's, it's plausible. It could be, but I just don't go that route. I would just say again, I don't think that the myths, even though like the super, sometimes it's super compelling about having interpret passages, I still don't see how it has better explanatory power than there was a life of Brian style guy. Right. So I don't know. Blessed anyway. are the cheese makers. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think either one of those guys is crazy. I don't think, I, I don't think the idea of thinking that Jesus might have been a myth is totally a crazy idea. Um, and Maybe it is, but then 
my question would be, well, what about him do, are you absolutely confident as a historian is true? Like, give me the list. I want to know. Did he walk on water? Well, no, none of the miracles you accept as an atheist historian, right? So, okay, what did Jesus specifically say? Like, did did Jesus write in the sand like it says in John 8? Well, that got added way later, so we could toss that out. And you start playing this game. There's there's very little that we know with confidence that Jesus did or said. So he he's a real figure is fine. Like, I'll grant you that. But we still don't know. When, so when you ask, my point being is if you ask the question, was he a madman or a liar? We don't know. We don't know if he was a crazy guy. He could have been. He could have been. Like, lots of cult leaders. Like, look at David Koresh. You can go on Netflix right now and and also on YouTube and find interviews with people that love David Koresh and still love him today, still think that David Koresh was someone special. But Pace does think David Koresh was a prophet sent by God to commit sin. What he did may be wrong, but Pace trusts that Koresh followed God's orders to the violent end. And that's what he was willing to take. And I honor him for that. Honoring Koresh has been a hard sell. Now, the rest of us all know David Koresh is, was crazy, obviously. But, I mean, was he crazy insane or was he just crazy in the way we use the term crazy? Like Joseph Smith. Was Joseph Smith crazy? I don't think so. I think he was an opportunist. Was Muhammad crazy? Uh, you know, who knows? Who, who, we can't go back with any confidence and know somebody's mental state. And was Jesus lying? Well, we don't even know how much words were put into Jesus' mouth. So like when Jesus said, this generation will not pass away till I come back, was he lying? Well, if Jesus really said that, I think he really believed it. So was was he lying? Well, I mean, technically, yeah, he told a lie. He didn't come back. But was he lying like maliciously? Well, if he said that, no, he, I'm sure he really believed it. If the story's true. But we also don't know. Maybe those words were put in his mouth later. We don't know. So madman, or, you know, liar, lunatic, we don't know. Now, was he Lord? Absolutely not. We can be certainly confident. We can we can be 99.9999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
Like, what's the chance Alexander the Great or Julius Caesar didn't exist? I would say hundreds of millions to one because there's so much evidence. We don't have that evidence for Jesus. So I think it's fair when I, I, I don't think it's unreasonable to say there's a small chance that Jesus was completely made up, even if it's only 1%. But let's never mind that. The reason that the reason that this is an issue is because people want to say Jesus existed and he said these things and people believe these things. So he had to be Lord, liar or lunatic. And certainly he wasn't crazy. Certainly not. Look it up. You know, he had all these followers and he said all these wonderful things and so many people worship him. You can't possibly think that he was crazy. I don't know. My posterior on Jesus being crazy is probably somewhere in the same range of his being a myth. Like it's not completely out of the question that Jesus had some sort of mental disorder. Like, I mean, in this, maybe in the same range as David Koresh. Now, just a quick edit to jump in here before you say, oh, you're being an atheist and you're being blah, 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 blah. Jesus' own family in the earliest, the earliest gospel, Mark chapter three, his own family thought he was crazy. And according to Mark's testimony here, the, you know, the elders and the Pharisees and so forth also thought he was criminally insane. So it's it's not going that far out on a limb to say there's a possibility that Jesus was indeed in some way afflicted with some mes mental disorder. His own family thought that. But I don't think David Koresh was crazy, like blah, 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 crazy. I think he, he had some mental shit going on. And he did some he did some fucked up stuff. So you have you then you have the liar. Well. No, Jesus could have been a complete truth teller, but other people wrote about him and we don't know what he said. We don't know for sure anything that he said. We have no, like we don't have Jesus's writings and we have stuff written down many, many decades later. And the earliest Christian writings that we can feel confident that are, you know, legitimate authorship to Paul and legitimate early writings He's not quoting Jesus. He's not writing down, Jesus said, you know, turn the other cheek, carry the backpack an extra mile. You know, if somebody has to borrow money from you, give it to him and don't ask for it back. And, uh, you know, it's easier for a rich man to go through, or it's easier for the a camel to go through an eye of a needle than a rich man to go through it. Like, we don't have Paul writing that stuff down. So could Jesus have been, uh, could Jesus have been, a truth teller, but later people wrote down stuff that were lies. Well, yeah, I mean, and, and what's the posterior on that as opposed to he was actually God? I mean, the act, the actual, he's, he's actually God is like the, you know, millions, excuse me, the actually God is like millions to one against. Now, if you're a Christian and you believe that Jesus if part of your reason for believing Jesus was God was because he, quote, fulfilled Old Testament prophecy, which is what apologists say all the time, you have two problems. One, go talk to a Jewish rabbi and have him explain to you why Jesus could not have been the Messiah. Uh, it's just impossible from, from a Jewish perspective. He couldn't. Now, if you can't steel man those reasons, then you're in the dark. Don't be in the dark. At least understand it. Understand why Jesus didn't fulfill prophecies and prophecies that were ascribed to him were just made up stuff. Like Paul just made stuff up and the gospels, you know, when the gospels want to put Jesus in Bethlehem, we don't know Jesus was born in Bethlehem. We just have Luke writing down stuff, you know, or, you know, come on, let's be adults about this stuff. If you want to believe it on faith, fine. But the problem you have is the things you're saying you have faith in or then contradict each other. And now where are you at? So Jesus was definitely not God. If you believe in the Abrahamic God, become a Jew, I guess, or be, be agnostic or be a Jew. But you're lying to yourself if you just say, oh, it's just for sure. You just have to listen to some apologetics and you know Jesus was real. 
sorry, it doesn't work like that. Go actual, go study the actual history and then ask yourself, what's more likely? Is it more likely people made stuff up, created a new religion, just like Muhammad would do later, like Joseph Smith did later, like David Koresh tried to do, like so many people in history have done and will continue to do. And this happens in Judaism and this happens in in uh, the Islamic world, in the Hindu world. It's, it just seems to be human nature. All right, this is the end of this video. Am I the Lord, a liar, or a lunatic? And I'm a little bit of all of three of those mixed together. Just ask any of my friends. Please like and subscribe and share. Thank you very much.